It's the RV trip of a lifetime, and we are bringing you along. I'm Maria Rossi Booth. And I'm Chad Booth. We are starting our big excursion of the year today and taking you to the Bay Area for the next month on a road trip that will make you want to explore San Francisco. We'll also give you more details about how you can win an RV safari of your own to sunny Anaheim, California, which includes a family pack to the happiest place on Earth. It's a month's worth of adventure, and it starts right now on At Your Leisure. Francisco, along with the RV. <laughs> we are starting our RV safari today with Ray City RV. We got Chad City and his whole family here, and we are just about ready to ascend Knob Hill. We are going to show you Northern California, all the little coast towns, the wine country, everything in the next few weeks on our program. But right now, we're in San Francisco. And we're trying to show you what the RV lifestyle is all about. And believe me, it's magnificent. So, from Knob Hill down to Fisherman's Wharf, there's a lot of history here. Let's discover it. So one of the places that we thought were really uh, cool to kind of go into was the Musée Marquis. Um, museum. It was just a bunch of old games, you know, something that parents would have had an experience when they were at Pier 39 where it originally was. Just a good walk down memory lane to see all those wonderful games that were the peak of the, of the community back then, uh, to see them still operating and, and running and it's a great fun time. San Francisco is a lot of fun to visit, as you can see. Yeah, we're just hanging out on the beach here in San Francisco, and I tell you, we should probably do this more often. We and should. so should you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, if you want to follow this series, keep close track, because for the next few weeks, we'll be giving you all the inside secrets. Fisherman's Wharf, there are so many restaurants and uh, great live entertainment that's outside. It's just a remarkable place to kind of hang out and, and just people watch to, to take in the whole environment of San Francisco. It is uh, full of culture, it's full of friendliness. It's a great place to get out and explore and learn about somebody else. San Francisco is very RV friendly. They have two great um, RV parks. They have the San Francisco RV Park and they have Treasure Island RV Park. Great places to park your RV and then take public transportation into the city and have a great and wonderful day. Let's go on to this week's travel adventure. The world is a big place, far bigger than we often give credit. It only seems small because generally we choose to visit the same places or explore the same trails. Once you get out to a new area, one you never heard about before, the size of the outdoors becomes a reality. That's what I found today when I set out from Nephi, Utah, west toward the Nevada border. I followed the Pony Express Overland Stage Trail, and I passed through hours worth of empty lands that ended up at one incredible small town with mountains that seemed completely out of place. This is Calio, an historic ranching community in the shadow of the Deep Creek Mountains, a city so small the names of the individual residents can be found on the welcome sign. History and adventure go back to the early days of Western settlement in Calio, and in a lot of ways, the lifestyle out here hasn't changed much in a hundred years. These mountains and their rugged rock outcrops have defined existence here and called to explorers looking to try something new. A lot of people don't know about it. I was thinking about that on my way out here today, and that's probably a good thing because it would probably, there'd be a crowd if they knew what the Deep Creek Mountain was really like. We'd, we'd see a lot more people out here than we really have. But for those of us who come out here and, and love it and for the people who live here, it's, it's very important for recreation for those of us who, who know the area. There's good hunting, both elk and deer. 
it's, it's a beautiful mountain to be on. There's, there's areas up there that are every, every bit as pretty as Mount Nebo or Timpanogos or the other mountains that most of us know about. Historically, there were mines up in some of those canyons that don't operate today, but there are cattle that run up there. Certainly hunters have gone up there through the years. Those are resources, access to, to water points, uh, irrigation diversion sites, and those were all absolutely critical to the development of this area. Calia was one of the main stops on the old Pony Express. Before heading onto the mountain, rancher Don Anderson gave me a tour of the old outpost, which is still standing on his land, and that he's more than willing to show off upon request. It's like a snapshot of history in the middle of nowhere. Okay, this room has been left pretty much intact, so it has a lot of different artifacts in it. I mean, look at this, it's, it's an old catcher's mitt. That is incredible. The Comprehensive Standard Dictionary. Let's see what we, what we got in here. Gurgle. Gully. Gully. Seems pretty standard. Oh, is that from like a telephone pole or something? Like an old pole? Yeah, old insulators. insulators. <sighs> it's always in fashion to shop Sears. After enjoying a tactile look at history, Juab County Commissioner Byron Woodland leads me into the Deep Creek Mountains. We set out through Granite Canyon and up to some of the overlooks that give you a good idea of what this landscape has to offer. The rocks feel like something out of the Grand Tetons, but here they are as we drive our 4x4s higher into the canyons. These roads have been the lifeblood of ranchers for over a century, and today they take us into a little visited world of beauty and majesty that few people have ever experienced. The last few years have brought conflicts concerning the roads in this part of the West. Discussions for actually turning the area into federal wilderness became more and more frequent. Land closures loomed while ranchers and recreationists banded together with community leaders to keep trails open. It's really inaccessible by ATV or hiking or, you know, when those roads are closed down, the only way you can get into it was hiking or on horses. When you get to be my age, it'd be pretty hard for me just to hike in there. But to have access to an ATV or a Jeep or a truck and be able to drive in there, that's pretty important. So those roads are, you know, not only for the for the ranchers who live out here and run cattle out there, but it's important for us to be able to, for guys like myself, to be able to go out there and, and visit that area and be able to get access to it. But I do appreciate the interaction between the state and the federal government on how the issues have been resolved and, and some of these roads have been retained within uh, the use of, of the public and not closed down to us for whatever use that we might have for those roads. Now, with the disputes ended and the roads open, the invitation is here to come and explore this out-of-the-way spot. There are camping areas near the mouth of Granite Canyon and Tom's Creek for those who want to spend a few days exploring, or you can make a day trip from Nephi and stay in the city. Either way, you're going to find something truly new in this big outdoor world we call home. I love it out here. To me, it's, it's beautiful. My wife says, what, what's beautiful about it? But for me, it's, it's a beautiful place to be, and I enjoy the openness of it. I enjoy being able to, to come out here and see the animals that are out here. It's something that I really enjoy. I come out here every chance I get. If somebody says, let's go to the desert, I'm always ready. And after today, so am I. For At Your Leisure, I'm Steve. Come into Race City today and find the RV that will define your family in 2016. Prices at Race City are the best of the year with our 2015 blowout, where you will never pay MSRP. Drive home this new Cyclone 3418, regularly priced $86,949, but Race City blowout priced at $69,559. That's a monthly payment of $396. Right now is the best time to get into a new RV, Race City RV off Riverdale Road in Roy, RayCity.com. Tucked away just outside of Cedar City, Utah, are two of Southern Utah's best kept secrets, Canaraville Falls and Kolob Canyons. The rare scenic views create beautiful backdrops to capture the perfect selfie. Get your selfie to Canaraville Falls or Kolob Canyons and get in on one of Utah's best kept secrets. Go to visitcedarcity.com and access your adventure. The Boat Show and Water Sports Expo is here. 
Shop, compare, and save on hundreds of 2016 boats. It's your best time to buy. Meet and watch wakeboard pros ride the rail jam. The Boat Show, Thursday, February 11th through Sunday the 14th at the Southtown Expo. The place to buy new boats and accessories with special show financing. ABC4 Utah and CW30 invite you to the Boat Show and Water Sports Expo, February 11th through the 14th in Sandy. The Boat Show is here, better climb. It's time to discover the four-stroke power plant of the new 2016 Yamaha SR Viper MTX. Smooth and predictable throttle response, seemingly never-ending delivery of power and torque, and most importantly, Yamaha's legendary reliability and durability. And now at Dick's Boat Shop in Clearfield, you can get the best prices of the season, starting as low as $75.99. Plus, you can hit the mountain with even more power with a Yamaha factory turbo kit installed for only $34.99. Dick's Boat Shop in Clearfield. World champion performance, world champion durability. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. I'm Darren Kinder, and today we're going to be putting on some fun new toys on our Hillside 4x4, courtesy of ARB. They sent us all these cool things. We've been sitting around all winter trying to figure out what to do, and now I've got some things to show you, so you can be ready for the 2016 Jamborees. Now, the first thing I want to show you are these ARB differential covers. These things are like 10 times heavier than the stock ones are, plus you have a drain plug, and also a dipstick on it so that you can check how much fluid's in there, see if it's clean. It also has a magnet on it so it'll pick up any of those fray little parts in there. So these are really heavy duty, plus they look really cool under the Jeep. Now the other thing that ARB sent us were these IPF lights. Now I know a lot of people are going to the uh, LED style, but these things are very durable and, and meant to last, plus the cost is a lot less. But one thing that's really nice is they came standard with a complete wiring kit that included all sorts of waterproof connectors on it. Instead of having those crummy ones that after a couple years they rot out and rust away, these should last a good long time. Now, when you head out to the trail, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna let the air out of your tires because you'll get a lot better traction, obviously, if you get down to about 15, 17 pounds. And this thing is really cool from ARB. And what it does is it threads onto your valve stems and then it's got this other part in it that can remove the core and allow you to drop down the air and you can watch the pressure the whole time. And then when you're done, you just push it back in, run your core back in and you're done. And the beauty of this is you don't end up shooting your core across the parking lot somewhere and losing it. And you can really dial in your pressure exactly where you want it. Now the other thing is, if you remember, is that with our 4x4 is that we put ARB lockers on it. And to engage and disengage those lockers, it needed a compressor. So what ARB has done is come up with this cool little kit that you can add an air chuck to that compressor. And now, when I'm done at the end of the day and I need to get back into town, I can just come over here, put this on my air chuck, and now I can fill up all four of my tires with my own compressor. I don't have to limp it back into town anymore. Well, if you'd like any more information about these cool toys, you can go to ARB's website or you can check it out on At Your Leisure. I'm Darren Kinder. We'll see you next time. Are you pushing the limits of riding? Are you holding the steepest side hills? Carving the toughest lines? In the deepest powder? The 2016 Ski Doo Sleds. Are you riding? Do. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. In the basin with the Ute Reservation, skiing starvation, that Duchesne County life. Come on in to the great outdoors. Put some adventure in your life and attend the Sportsman's Vacation and RV Show, February 18th through the 21st at the Southtown Expo. See hundreds of new RVs, motorhomes, travel trailers, and accessories. Buy at the show and save. Take advantage of special show financing. Find hunting, fishing, and travel destinations. Gourmet and Dutch oven cooking classes. Register to win an Alaskan fishing trip. C4 Utah and CW30 invite you to the RV show February 18th through the 21st. In the mountains, there's only one way. Through the tightest trees, 
steepest climbs, and deepest drifts. And always go higher and further than before. Welcome back to Asia Leisure, everybody. We are on the ferry boat heading over to Alcatraz Island, which, as you all know, that was where they kept all the hardened criminals up until about 1962. Alcatraz uh, closed in the 60s, and now the National Park Service runs tours. So are you ready? Let's go find out about Alcatraz and the Birdman. Alcatraz is a national park and a tourist attraction, um, but when it was in operation, um, it was an island with a prison on it. And it was a prison that had the worst criminals in the country. Um, Al Capone was there, and the Birdman are some of the famous inmates that were at Alcatraz. You can kind of pay extra for a guided tour. However, most of the tour is self-guided with an audio. And the audio is really neat, actually. And when you get into the cafeteria, they kind of play what it would have sounded like to be in the cafeteria at that time. There's other sites where you just kind of go and look and maybe read a little plaque. But at Alcatraz, they really try to engage all of your senses by getting you to really feel what it would have been like to be at Alcatraz during the time of its operation. When you're on the ferry on the way over there, you don't really know what you're expecting. You're like, yeah, I'm just on a ferry. This is fun. We're out on the water. You don't really know what you're expecting, but you're having a good time. I think on the way back, um, I think you can still have a good time, but normally it's a little bit later in the day and you've kind of had time to maybe reflect or think about what this prison was like. The American story is not always pretty and, and happy and that really, it, it rounds out and gives us a rich and robust nuance to our history. And so I think engaging with that is really important and I think can be very meaningful for people. By day, you know, it's it's not very scary, but it definitely has like an eerie feeling. Our Trailhead segment today is sponsored by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. That's that great place where you can order all kinds of accessories for your ATV or your motorcycles, and they'll ship it right to your door. Just go to the RockyMountainATVMC.com website, and you can take a look at it there. I'm Reese Stein at your leisure on Antelope Island, one of northern Utah's best wildlife preserves. But today, they're losing some of their most popular critters. Antelope Island is famous for its bison herd, big mule deer, and the island's namesake, first observed in 1845 by John C. Fremont and Kit Carson. Coming across the island, the first animal they saw was an antelope, or a pronghorn as they're typically known as today. And so they had a nice tasty dinner that night and it was called Antelope Island because of that. And soaring high over the island hills, its latest resident. They were reintroduced here on Antelope Island State Park in 1997. The California subspecies of bighorn sheep has taken flight with the help of the helicopter. Securely bagged and tethered, the animals are brought two by two to a staging area near the Gar Ranch. We're out here capturing to transplant some bighorn sheep today. And here's how they do it. The helicopter tracks the fleeing sheep, and when in range, a gunner shoots a weighted net over the animal. It trips and falls. The sheep are then hogtied with a heavy belt, blindfolded to keep them somewhat calm, slung beneath the chopper, and airlifted back to base camp. The pilot gently lowers his precious cargo to the frozen turf. Wildlife biologists and volunteers move in quickly to carry the sheep first to a scale where the animal is weighed. Next, it gets a thorough physical checkup under direction of division veterinarian Annette Rue. We're taking uh, some uh, samples for disease surveillance and we're doing a physical examination. We're ensuring that the sheep are um, healthy. They take blood samples, inject antibiotics, swab every orifice, including the tonsils. We take some measurements, see what type of condition they're in, do some blood work and some sw other swabs to check for disease. And we don't want to be transplanting animals that are, that are not going to benefit the other population. So yeah, we try to make sure that they're healthy. Cold water is sprayed on the sheep to keep it from overheating. Sixth grade volunteer Maria Dubois has an important job. Taking the temperatures of the bighorn sheep. How cool is that? It's fun. 
it can be traumatic for the sheep. Yeah, it is a very stressful experience for the, the animals. The best we can do is process them as quickly as possible and get them in the trailer with the other uh, sheep and uh, try to keep our voices down when we process them. Each sheep gets a numbered ear tag for future identification and a radio transmitter collar so its movements can be tracked. Then they're loaded into a trailer for the move to their new home in Millard County. To the Oak Creek Mountains, which are just uh, <laughs> west of Scipio, east of Oak City. Why there? We started a new population there, try, reintroduced bighorn sheep back to uh, historic habitat two years ago. They are doing well, just trying to give the population another shot in the arm and bolster population numbers. Here in fewer than 20 years, the antelope island herd has exploded and become an important seed for sheep populations all over the state. Oh, they do wonderful. Uh, there are no predators for the bighorn sheep out here. And, you know, typically we only have coyotes and bobcats are the largest predators, and they're a little too small for the bighorn, and so they thrive out here. You know, there's around 250 on Antelope Island State Park now, and so it's just a perfect nursery herd to be able to use to transplant into other areas in Utah. Utah's bighorns have become a favorite among hunters and wildlife watchers alike. They often hang out in hard-to-get places, but seeing these majestic symbols of wildness is a real thrill. You know, they're one of the traditional Utah animals, and just, you know, when you think of bighorn, at least for me, I think of the ram's butting heads and, and just the, those big horns with the curls and just neat animals to see. Restyled at your leisure on Antelope Island. It's out there. Something is definitely out there. Whatever it is, it's big. I won't play. I swear, we got so close I could smell it. But then, poof, it was gone. Right. It exists. The new Honda Pioneer 1000 with the best in class engine and six speed fully automatic dual clutch transmission. Pioneer 1000 from Honda. Explore a world of shifting sand and red rock outcroppings. This week's feature Utah State Park is Coral Pink Sand Dunes, just north of Kanab on Highway 89. Changed by winds, these mountains and hills of sand can move as much as 50 feet per year. Crimson Dunes offer adventures for all visitors with areas for off-highway vehicle enthusiasts and those seeking non-motorized pursuits. About 90% of the dunes are open for riding, but all of the dunes are open for hiking and just playing in the sand. Camping is available with full RV hookups open year-round, as well as areas for tent camping and my personal favorite, pot showers. Venture into a new world at Coral Pink Sand Dunes State Park Utah State Parks, adventures for everyone. Have you ever wanted to go on a vacation to Mars? What about a visit to the Old West? Impossible, right? Well, forget what you think is real. In southern Utah's Kane County, other worlds are just an ATV ride away. The Old West lives on in every sunset. From the downtown streets of Little Hollywood to the vistas that have inspired the world. Never find yourself closer to home and yet farther than you've ever been. Southern Utah's Kane County, where anywhere is possible. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, At Your Chocolate. <laughs> One of the things that you would have to do when you come to San Francisco is obviously make your way all the way down past all the piers and yep. you end up in Chocolateville. Your Delhi Square, here we are. Okay, so we've been having an argument for the last few minutes during the commercial break. Which is better, dark chocolate malted milk balls? Or milk chocolate. What do you say? Get on a website and tell us. I'm a dark kind of guy. I'm milk. 
And she always says, you are kind of dark, like a brooding cloud, right? <laughs> it's better for you, though. Mm. Yeah, I know. These are the best if you've never had them. Chocolate malt balls, so good. Our event calendar has been very busy today in San Francisco. So what does the official at your leisure calendar look like? What are your events? Let's find out. Thanks, Chad and Rhea. Well, first off, event-wise, we just wanted to remind all of you about the Winter 4x4 Jamboree happening next weekend in Hurricane. It's an amazing event, and you'll be able to see some of the most spectacular country in the West. You can still sign up now at winter4x4jamboree.com. Also, last week, Darren and Jill visited the ice castles at Soldier Hollow outside Heber, Utah. It's open to the public now and well worth a visit. You can find out more at icecastles.com. Also, we want to remind you about the 2016 Boat Show, taking place February 11th through the 14th at the Southtown Expo Center. The winter has been a good one so far, and it looks like we'll have full lakes and reservoirs this summer, so check out all the newest craft to bring your family together in 2016. Then the following week is the annual RV Show, also at the Southtown Expo Center, February 18th through the 21st. These are the two biggest shows of the year, and the cast from AYL will be at both of them. We'll be giving away AYL stickers and promoting our upcoming giveaways. Speaking of giveaways, Chad and Rhea are in San Francisco right now on their RV safari, but we want you to be able to enjoy one of your own. So we are giving one away from At Your Leisure and Ray City RV. It's the 2016 RV safari giveaway, and you can sign up right now at AYLTV.com. The trip includes a seven-day RV rental from Ray City RV, a four-day slot at the Anaheim RV Resort in Southern California, and four park hopper passes for three days of fun at the happiest place on earth. The winner will be announced on the Aero 103.5 and right here on AYL. This is an incredible trip, and you can get all the details and sign up at AYLTV.com or at the Race City website. We'll also be offering extra chances to win through our Facebook page in the coming weeks. So become a fan on Facebook and you'll up your odds of winning. It's the 2016 RV Safari giveaway and it's going to be an amazing trip. This is the biggest year for giveaways we've ever had. Now, why don't we see what we can expect from next week's AYL episode? The RV Safari continues next week as Chad and Rhea explore some hidden locales on the West Coast. Then Darren Kinder hits the snow and finds out how the winter is faring so far in 2016. Then we'll follow one family as they turn the sand dunes into their own winter wonderland. We'll also show how one small town is changing for the future. Own the outdoors every week with At Your Leisure. Well, folks, we're winding down our a well adventure here in San Francisco, and we decided what better place to wind it down than the Lombard Street here, which is the most crooked street street in the world, is that correct? Yes, that's true, it is. And of course, anybody that's walking up and down this street is with us having the longest wheelbase car in the world is probably getting a little wound up right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's been a great adventure. And don't forget to tune in next week for our Race City RV Safari, which we're gonna be showing you more of Northern California. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. But right now, we're just gonna tell you that, you know, there's adventure around every bend. So just get out there and create your own adventure. We'll we, see you next week. We just found about 20 bands. Goodbye. I don't know if we can get this, because there'll be people to run over the whole way. Chad said that's what I look like after eight hours of being in the car. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chad Booth from At Your Leisure. I hope you just enjoyed the YouTube video that you just watched. Now. Remember, we come up with new videos like this every single week, so you might want to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a single story that we have out. Now, you can also share us with all of your friends on social media. Here's how to do it right here, and that way they can have fun too. If you want detailed information, we of course have our website, AYLTV.com, and from there you can find out which television stations we broadcast on so you never have to spend a day without your fix of family-oriented outdoor recreation adventure. Plus, don't forget we have really cool contests.